Welcome to another lesson from SD Kaysen Courses. I am Shalone Kaysen and today we're going to be talking about the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And this is a lesson in a series of lessons about Holy Days of Obligation. You can check them out in the playlist. Check out all the other videos we have available on this topic. But today we're talking about the Feast of the Immaculate Conception specifically. We're going to start as always with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The solemnity of the Immaculate Conception celebrates the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the 8th of December, nine months before the Feast of the Nativity of Mary, which is on the 8th of September. It is one of the most important Marian feasts in the liturgical calendar of the Roman Catholic Church. By pontifical decree, it is the patronal feast day of Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Italy, Korea, Nicaragua, Paraguay, the Philippines, Spain, the United States, and Uruguay. And a patronal feast day is just the feast day of the patron of that country. And of course, a patron is a saint that is considered as, you know, especially important in that area. So all these countries, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Italy, and so forth, have the Virgin Mary as their patron, which means the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, is the patronal feast day. And also in Portugal, it is a royal decree that the Immaculate Conception is designated as the day honoring their patroness. So since 1953, the Pope visits the Column of the Immaculate Conception, which is a 19th century monument in central Rome depicting the Blessed Virgin Mary, to offer expiatory prayers commemorating the solemn event. The feast was solemnized, uh, solemnized as a holy day of obligation on the 6th of December, 1708. And Holy days of obligation are simply days in which the faithful are expected to attend mass and engage in rest from work and recreation. According to the third commandment, of course, we have an entire video and lesson with a little quiz about holy days of obligation. So you can go check that out. All right. So it was actually the 6th of December, 1708 with a papal bull called Commissi Nobis Divinitus of Pope Clement XI. And it is celebrated with masses, parades, fireworks, processions, food, and cultural festivities in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Catholic countries. Now let's talk about the history. The Eastern Church first celebrated a feast of the conception of the most holy and all pure mother of God, on the 9th of December, perhaps as early as the 5th century in Syria. The original title of the feast focused more specifically on Saint Anne, who was the mother of Mary, being termed Silepsis Tes Hagias Kai Theo Prometoros Annas, conception of Saint Anne, the ancestress of God. By the 7th century, the feast was already widely known in the East. However, when the Eastern Church called Mary Akrantos, spotless, immaculate, this was not defined as a doctrine. Most Orthodox Christians reject the scholastic definition of Mary's preservation from original sin, and scholasticism is a medieval school of philosophy that employs a critical organic method of philosophical analysis, and a lot of people still consider themselves scholastics to this very day. Okay, so the concept of Mary being preserved from original sin was later defined in the Western Church after the Great Schism of 1054. And the Great Schism of 1054, also known as the East-West Schism, is the break of communion between the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church, which again happened in about 1054. And it was a series of ecclesiastical differences and theological disputes that caused this break. Okay, the feast associated with the Virgin Mary's Immaculate Conception initially was celebrated on the 8th of December. It was translated to the Western Church in the 8th century. It then spread from the Byzantine southern Italy to Normandy during the Norman dominance, eventually reaching England, France, Germany, and Rome. In 1568, Pope Pius V, who was the ruler of the Papal States from 1566 until 1572, he is venerated as a saint. Pope Pius V revised the Roman breviary, which is 
a liturgical book that contains public and canonical prayers, hymns, psalms, readings, and everything for everyday use for Roman Catholics. So he revised the breviary, and though the Franciscans were allowed to retain the office and mass written by Bernardine de Busti, this office was suppressed for the rest of the church, and the office of the nativity of the Blessed Virgin was substituted instead, the word conception being substituted for nativity. According to the papal bull, Commissi Nobis Divinitus, dated the 6th of December 1708, Pope Clement XI, who was, the, who was the head of the Catholic Church from 1700 until 1721, mandated the feast as a holy day of obligation, which is to be celebrated in future years by the faithful. So that was in 1708. Furthermore, the pontiff requested that the papal bull be notarized in the Holy See to be further copied and reproduced for dissemination. Prior to Pope Pius IX's definition of the Immaculate Conception as a Roman Catholic dogma in 1854, most missals refer to it as the Feast of the Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The festal texts of this period focus more on the action of her, her conception than on the theological question of her preservation from original sin. So basically, in the early years, which was from, if we look right here, so it was from after 1054, they instituted this feast, it was specifically about the conception of the Virgin Mary. It wasn't about any theological issues of her being preserved from sin or not. That didn't happen until after 1854 with the definition of the Immaculate Conception. So this feast focused on her conception, her, you know, um, basically coming into the world. It didn't specifically focus on if she was sinless or not. And only later was that attached to the same feast. All right, continue on. A missal published in England in 1806 indicated the same collect for the feast of the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary was used for this feast as well. And a collect is just a short prayer that happens at the beginning of a liturgy. Okay. The first move towards describing Mary's conception as immaculate came in the 11th century. In the 15th century, Pope Sixtus IV, who was the Pope from 1470, starting in 1471, he promoted the festival and explicitly tolerated both the views of those who promoted it as the Immaculate Conception and those who challenged such a description, a position later endorsed by the Council of Trent. So during this time in the 1400s, it was accepted to believe that maybe it was an Immaculate Conception and maybe not. It was accepted to have either view. The proper for the feast of the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the medieval Sorrow Missal merely addressed the fact of her, concept, of her conception. The collect for the feast reads, O God, mercifully hear the supplication of thy servants who are assembled together on the conception of the Virgin Mother of God may at her intercession be delivered by thee from dangers which beset us. And again, a proper is a part of the liturgy that varies according to the date, either representing an observance within the liturgical year or of a particular saint. So this proper is for the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it doesn't mention anything specifically about an immaculate conception. It's just talking about her conception in general. Moving on, Pope Pius IX, who was Pope in 1878, he issued the Apostolic Constitution Ineffabilis Deus, which is uh, defines the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. And he says, quote, the most blessed Virgin Mary in the first instance of her conception by a singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, was preserved free from all stain of original sin, unquote. According to the universal norms of the liturgical year and the calendar, the solemnity, which is a rank of a feast of the highest rank, the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception cannot replace an Advent Sunday. If the 8th of December falls on a Sunday, the solemnity is transferred to the following Monday. In some countries, including the United States, the obligation to attend Mass does not transfer to Monday. So the 
Holy Day of Obligation does not have to be uh, followed in a country such as the U.S. if it falls on a Monday. All right, moving on. The 1960 Code of Rubrics, still observed by some in, accor in accordance with Sumorum, Sumorum Pontificum, gives the Feast of the Immaculate Conception preference even over an Advent Sunday. So Sumorum Pontificum allows certain churches to use the old uh, Latin Missal, which is the Missal of 1962. And in that Missal, the Immaculate, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception can will can go on a Sunday and overrule an Advent Sunday. So you would be, if you're going to a church, for example, like the Fraternity of St. Peter, then, and you go to Immaculate Conception on a Sunday, that is going to cover your Holy Day of Obligation. Okay, and we're going to talk about a little bit about Oriental Orthodoxy and Eastern Orthodoxy. So in the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, which is the largest Oriental Orthodox Church and is one of the few Christian churches in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, it, which, excuse me, it is one of the few Christian churches in Sub-Saharan Africa which originates before European colonization. All right, they celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception on August 13th, and the 96th chapter of the Kebra Naga states, quote, he cleansed Eve's body and sanctified it and made it for a dwelling in her for Adam's salvation. Mary was born without blemish, for he made her pure without pollution. So that is what the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church believes about the Immaculate Conception. And in Ethiopia, Eastern Orthodoxy, which of course is the uh, is a group of Greek Orthodox churches, they do not accept the Roman Catholic dogma of the Immaculate Conception. Accordingly, they celebrate the 9th of December and they call it the Feast of the Conception by Saint Anne of the Most Holy Theotokos. And of course, Theotokos is a title of Mary, which means Mother of Jesus but it specifically means mother of God. So while the Orthodox believe that the Virgin Mary was from her conception filled with every grace of the Holy Spirit in the view of her calling as the mother of God, they do not teach that she was conceived without original sin as her understanding and terminology of the doctrine of original sin differs from the Roman Catholic articulation. The Orthodox do, however, affirm that Mary is all holy and never committed a personal sin during her lifetime. The Orthodox feast is not a perfect nine months before the feast of the Nativity of the Theotokos, which is the 8th of September, as it is in the West, but a day later. The feast is not ranked among the great feasts of the church year, but is a lesser ranking feast. And a great feast is um, in the Eastern Orthodox Church, the feast and the feast of the death and resurrection of Jesus is called Pascha. It is the greatest of all holy days and as such is called the Feast of Feasts. Immediately below in importance, there is a group of 12 great feasts. And we're going to look into this just for a second. And uh, together with Pascha, these are the most significant dates on the Orthodox liturgical calendar. Eight of the great feasts are in honor of Jesus Christ, while the other four are dedicated to the Virgin Mary. But the conception of the Virgin Mary isn't among those great feasts. All right, let's talk about which countries have it as a public holiday. The solemnity is registered public holiday in the following countries. We have Andorra, Argentina, Austria, Chile, Colombia. And in Colombia, people cook food and delicacies honoring the day. We have Equatorial Guinea. Guam, Italy, and let's talk about Italy, has been a national holiday since 1953. The Pope, in his capacity as Bishop of Rome, visits the Column of the Immaculate Conception in Piazza di Spana to offer expiatory prayers commemorating the solemn event. We have Liechtenstein, Macau, and China, and we have Malta, well, specifically Macau. Uh, we have Malta, Monaco, where it's celebrated with food festivities, particularly honoring mothers and grandmothers. Nicaragua, which is celebrated with local parades. Panama, which is celebrated as Mother's Day in Panama. We have Paraguay, Peru, the Philippines, 
and it is designated as a non-working public holiday in honor of the Virgin Mary as patroness of the country. We have Portugal, San Marino, the Seychelles in Spain, uh, and the 8th of November, 1760, is marked as a national holiday as designated by Pope Clement the 13th. Then we have Slits, uh, excuse me, Switzerland, 13 out of 26 cantons, and a canton is a member state of the Swiss Confederation, they have elected to make this a registered public holiday. So uh, just about exactly half of the country has made it a public holiday. Then we have East Timor, the Vatican, of course, and Venezuela. And that is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception in a nutshell. Basically, it is a celebration of the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the 8th of December in some churches and the 9th of December in others. All the churches celebrate her conception, but it is only the Western church which specifically celebrates that her conception was immaculate and without sin. We also have the, um, we have the Tawahedo church, let me look it up right here, which does celebrate it as immaculate because it says here Mary was born without blemish, although they might not use that terminology. And uh, it is a public holiday in many countries, as we just talked about. And it was solemnized as a holy day of obligation in 1708. So that is basically the Feast of the Immaculate Conception for you. And that's it. Until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.